The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report with Dom and Charles. Charles, I am in Queensland. I'm on the Gold Coast. And let me say, the 80s architecture here is absolutely brilliant. I've come here in part to understand what it is that makes Peter Dutton Peter Dutton. Uh, as yes. the Queenslander that, that we know he is, mm. there's something about the Gold Coast that makes me yes. not worry so much about the risks of a nuclear meltdown. No, exactly. Because if the world was destroyed, at least that would get rid of the Gold Coast. Well, I just like, think architecturally yeah. it'd be a clean yes. slate, you know? Yeah, it would actually improve it. So it, I, th- I think they've made a mistake. Uh, in Peter Dutton's mm. list of seven uh, new nuclear reactor sites, mm. I think the Gold Coast has to be added to it. But other Mm. than that, um, since I've landed in Queensland a short while ago, I'm really starting to think this is this is going to work. There's a couple of couple of minor issues that we will talk about, but I reckon they're all completely workable. Okay, great. Well, let's get into it straight after this. So, look, as um, people will know, Peter Dutton's come up with his list, uh, his bold, brave list of of seven uh, places around the country where he will turn um, mouldy old coal fired power stations into exciting new in some cases, cutting edge, um, Mm. amazing nuclear power stations to get us to net zero without having to worry about renewables. Yes, yes. I think um, this is a plan. It is. It's Um, a bold vision. Uh, No one in opposition since, I don't know, uh, Bill Shorten or John Houston has come up with such a bold... Or or Mark Latham, I think. Mark Latham. Um, Policy for opposition. uh, Arguably, wasn't it... um, yeah, it was John Hewson. Yeah, you're right. John Hewson was the other one. Yeah. To be honest, I think what this announced, a lot of political commentators, including clearly you, Dom, have got it slightly wrong in terms of what actually was announced uh, a couple of days ago. Really? Like, and what Peter Dutton was saying. Yeah. I think everyone's a bit confused because they're thinking. Well, set me straight. A lot of people think that what he was announcing was seven nuclear power plans. Um, yeah. What actually They're as good as built, bit, Charles. They're as good as built. Mm, no. See, uh, and I know this because I was talking to some staffers in Peter Dutton's office about this um, just after the announcement. And um, what has happened is Peter Dutton thought that it was opposite stay on on the day that he anou- did the announcement. Right. So the whole oh. thing is that all, the entire policy is opposite stay policy. Right. So the whole thing is so so the, I'll just outline a few of the key you know things like he wanted to reduce electricity prices. By bringing in the most expensive form of electricity generation known to mankind, right? Like that is, see what he's doing? Like he was just playing the opposite game. Like he was going, I'm going to reduce electricity prices by making them more expensive, right? See? Well, we do this, I do this with my children all the time. It's a very fun game. You know, like, because he's a conservative government, right? And the whole policy is that they're going to they're gonna be government-owned. All these nuclear power plants are going to be government-owned. The government is going to take over an entire sector of... Of the economy and nationalise it like the communists. And so to be a conservative, I'm going to have a communist style command economy, state run electricity sector, right? Do you see what it is? It's quite funny when you realise what he was what he was doing. You know, like um, to solve climate change, what we're going to do is we're going to extend coal fired power stations until 2035. See, that's again, that's, we're going to extend the life of coal to solve climate change. That's a joke, right? That's like, that's opposite stay, right? Like, oh, to get, you know, like, the way he would stay. Would, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. and the final one, the very funniest one was the idea that to get elected in Australia, I'm going to propose a big policy just before the election with really specific details. Because that never that doesn't happen. You don't do that <laughs> if you want to get elected, right? So it's all just... Right, just, so you're saying just, that, that that's the yeah. thing that makes it clear. Yes, yes. If you actually... I must say, realize, the opposite day thought, meme, that was, that was devastating. He thought it was an o- opposite star. And I, I think he thought that everyone knew that. I think he went out there and he went, well, you know, let's have some fun. Let's just do an opposite stay 
little announcement. But then everyone's taking him seriously. And I think I, c- I think you can blame the sort of left liberal media, the Craig Rucastles, the ABC Brigade. You know, all these sort of naysayers have come out against it, like Climate 200 and, you know, like all those sort of lefty organisations like, you know, the business community and the mining sector and Andrew Forrest. You know, all those lefty, fu- you know, people that... Peter Dutton hate. You know, they've all come out against it. Well, that that's that's because they didn't understand. No, 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 no. It is just Opposites Day. I must say that uh, the, what do you think this is, Opposites Day uh, <laughs> attack has, it's only sharpened uh, in its in its effectiveness since primary school. Um, <laughs> absolutely. That's one yeah, theory. Okay. Right. But I, I put to you, Charles, I put to yeah. you that I'm in Queensland. I am actually oh, right. in Queensland. Every day is opposite and day th- in Queensland. A little bit, yeah. little bit, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I think that the, the white sands, the white sand street brigade developers who built all these massive ugly condos around, I think they thought mm. they were beautifying and modernising the place. Um, yes, and, but so, the thing is, yeah, Charles, it is opposite day. You've got and to, to save think- the Great Barrier Reef, they built a massive coal port. Yeah, didn't they? <laughs> well, actually, did you yeah. know that? Oh, I found this out the other day. I did, um, under Joe, there was a serious plan to drill and mine and break down and sell 80% of the Great Barrier Reef. Did you know that? Queensland claimed that they owned it. And did it. they do no, it? No, they couldn't because in the end that the, uh, the, the federal government got involved and stopped them. But Queensland asserted oh. the right to just basically demolish the whole thing under Joe. If he'd had his way, yeah, well, it I mean, would have been see something decades like the earlier. Have you, have you gone snorkelling in the Great Barrier Reef? Never. I'm too late oh, now. It's, Isn't it dead? Yeah, it's too late. It, but yeah. It's very beautiful. But you, it does make you go, you know what I want to do? I want to dig this up. Drill it. I yeah. Want to, I want to kill it. <laughs> That's right. So let yeah. me explain to you in a moment, Charles, uh, how Queenslanders think differently and, and where you see, oh, your sort of s- southerner opposite day irony political satire, I see yeah. possibility, Charles. I see possibility. Yeah. The thing you've got to understand about Queenslanders, and, and I'm mm. now a Queenslander. Now I'm, I'm here. I'm staying. Yeah, right? Yeah, this is okay. my new home. Is yeah. that we see possibility. You see, uh, and Joe's the one that set the tone for this, right? You see heritage listed, uh, you know, ancient, uh, you know, um, historic pub. I see mm. a building site that we just demolished in the middle of the night. You don't take yes. no for an answer. And that's the that's yes. thing that Southerners don't understand about Peter Dutton. If he yes. wants to build a nuclear power plant or seven of them, yes. it's yes. going to happen. And I've got a list here, Charles, of all the objections that the lefty media have made uh, right in here. the past couple of days. And yes. That's just a question of getting a big enough bulldozer. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay. Well, I mean, one of the things, Charles, uh, is that every premier says they won't allow it um, and that they've actually made nuclear power illegal in their in their states. Yes, yes. To which Peter Dutton says, I'm going to make them. I'm going to pay them so much money. And this is what he said. Right. Premiers yes. never say no to money. I'll just give them yes. money until they say yes. So, but whose money will he be giving to the states? Taxpayers. But wait a minute, if he can give money to the states from taxpayers, why doesn't he just do that anyway? Because, like Charles, nuclear bit. the point you <laughs> need to understand is that when you, you can but, give so much money, every what? Premier says yes. If the check's big enough, if the grant's big enough, they'll just say yes. And but, that's how you make power cheaper is by giving the Premiers lots of taxpayers' money. But, but wait a minute, who's paying? But, but wait a minute, so the power's going to be cheaper because our taxes will be higher? What? I don't understand. No, you're just going to a bit of debt. It's all about the, it's all about the electricity bill, Charles. You've got to get cheaper bills. It doesn't matter how much we have to pay the premiers to allow it, okay? It's, you've got to think big. our money that he's paying. I don't understand. Well, it won't like, be any more. Under- It'll be the premier's money. <laughs> so that's that's one objection. So forget that. Okay. Premiers are going to come in line. That makes no s- sense. This CSI, on, yeah. uh, that's, but that you stop the southern thinking. I don't okay, want the sorry, southern yeah. thinking. Okay, CSIRO, sorry, yeah. um, they yeah. issue their boring gen cost report You know, every year. Oh, so boring. They yes. look at the prices of how much it would cost to... Um, to, to generate electricity. And they've mm. said that um, nuclear is by far the most expensive, as you right. know, as you mentioned before. That means the economy grows by more when you build a bigger power plant, Charles. They've said $8.5 billion per power plant, that mm. the bigger ones, get this, the bigger ones, if, if we build the bigger ones, they'll but, be $12 billion, the yeah. full-scale ones, except that, here's the, here's the trick, that's once you've got an existing nuclear program. CSIRO says the first ones, like the first couple big ones, will be mm. double. That's what they say. So the first ones are going to be twenty-four billion dollars per power plant. The mm. ones that he wants to build in twenty thirty-five. Yeah, but you don't. You never include. You you amortise your startup costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, as so I say, so this will grow don't, the don't economy. Don't worry about it. It's just a rounding error. But it's a twenty-four no, no, but, billion dollar 
injection into the economy. But I, I don't understand. But Oh, I see. So you're saying it's actually good that they're going to be so expensive. It's pump priming. It's vision. Yes. Vision's wait, not cheap, um, Charles. Isn't the $24 billion mainly going to go to overseas nuclear power plant makers like it's like general electric don't they get the money because it's oh, we don't no, have don't the mean technology the, i don't mean that the australian economy is going to grow charles oh right no no, no okay. the world economy will grow yeah right so there's but that, also so, how does it grow our economy because the thing is the, the, the nuclear is just to replace the coal right like it's not like there's any extra electricity or is he going to keep the coal on even after no, no in fact the there'll nuclear. probably be less There'll probably be right. less. Uh, so we'll talk about that because uh, I've got what? some numbers on that as well. But essentially, okay. uh, I think one of the things is he's going to have to pay a lot of money to security guards to keep out the anti-nuclear protesters. That yes. will generate jobs. Yes. That's po- that in does these communities. Yeah. It does. Unless you so just go a little bit more Queensland cop style and shoot yeah. the protesters. Might be cheaper. No, you don't. You just hit them with phone books, Charles. Phone books. Yeah. And that that keeps the phone book industry in production yep. as well. Yep. So that's good. Good for the paper industry. <laughs> now, Charles, another yep. objection that's been levelled at this is that it's not clear whether um, they're large scale, like I've been mentioning, all these new small mod- modular reactors. And yes. ANSTO, you know ANSTO, the people that run the uh, the Lucas Heights reactor? Yes, yes. They say, I drive, and I quote... Drive past there all the time. Yeah. They say, yep. uh, it's fair to say that the new, the small modular reactors are still in their infancy and a relatively untested concept. Yes. So, test it on us. Yes. Test it exactly. on us. Ma- make us the test bed. Put the first well, one if you're talking, here. If you're talking as a Queenslander... Yeah. I agree. If you're talking as an Australian, I, I kind of disagree. But if, if we're talking about, like, testing it on... The Queensland nuclear sites, mm. then yeah, that's a good idea. Although that is strange because in Queensland we like big things, not small things. We don't small modular reactors yeah. have got to be, you know, we want the big. No, small but you make a reactor. big small reactor. That's right. That, that's that what you do. do. <laughs> that's the solution. <laughs> the Chaser Report. More news, less often. Couple of other things, Charles. Minor objections. Um, the small modular ones are about 350 megawatts. The big ones are 1,400 megawatts. Right. Uh, according to Graham Redfern from The Guardian, who's an expert on this, at the moment right now, do you know how many, megawatt, uh, how many megawatts we're generating with coal just on the east coast? Oh, I don't know, like 10? 21,200, Charles. Um, but given the slated close. closures, close. given the closures that, that we know are going to happen by 2035, hmm. there's only going to be 5,000 megawatts left. Oh, so we need to keep them all running, all the coal plants, and probably build more. Because well, these... like if so, it, so nuclear it will actually mean that we don't replace coal within. Like we just have to keep it going. No, because it's only fourteen hundred megawatts for the big ones and three fifty for the small ones, and we need twenty one thousand plus more because we'll have even more people. Plus, that's only the east coast. So. When we say we need seven of these things, it's probably more like 70. It's 70. Yeah, well, that was the original number. Remember he said uh, we're going to build 70 nuclear power Of plants. the small ones. Remember? Yeah, the fun size ones. So that's a good idea. No private investor wants to do it because it's so expensive. No. And in fact, the, the one trial of the small modular uh, technology in America was shut down because it got too expensive. But Charles, to a Queenslander, this is an opportunity. Yes, they said it couldn't be done. I mean, Charles, mm. they said you, you shouldn't build a, a, you know, a, a freeway on the bank of the Brisbane River because it would be ugly. You yes. just build it. You just no, you build just it. Build it. Yes. That's right. And they said that you couldn't make the NBN go on the existing copper network. But yeah. the coalition, they just did that anyway. They did it anyway. It, it was, worked. They yep. found the loophole, which was how, how, not minding how slow it was. And it's the same yep. with these power plants. You don't mind how little they generate. Yes. They're a great investment. They're a great yep. investment. Don't mind... Every detail about them. They're no, good. no, yes. that's right. Ignore the megawatts. Um, ignore the fact that they don't own any, any of the land. They, they'd all got privatised and sold to people like AGL. We've got to yes. buy it back. We've got to renationalise, Charles. That's what we're doing. We've got to well, get the is. poles it's and wires back. very communist. Do we know? Do we think that maybe? Yes. You know, Pet, Peter Dutton's a bit of a communist at heart. Well, on this issue, because he's a Queenslander, he knows sometimes the state's got to get in. Mm. You know, the state's yeah. got. We're going to paint all the poles and wires. Uh, wise maroon. Yes, and it's gonna completely happen. Now, I Charles- just to actually come up with uh, a way to do this that would actually work. Oh right. wow! Does Which it involve is- uh, Queensland uh, out of the box thinking? Yes. Oh, good. And it, it builds on your idea, which is. What we do is we design an Aussie-style nuclear reactor. Oh, now you're talking. Which is both a nuclear reactor, maybe a small one, mm. uh, 
combined with a sports stadium, right? Then yes. every electorate, every electorate is going to want to build their nuclear sports stadiums. And suddenly you link the two and then you get the lights, you know, you get good lights. Yeah, for your, the lights for your are nuclear powered. Yep. And and then and then it's it's and you put it all in charge. You don't make the energy department in charge of everything. Mm. You just outsource it to the NRL. They they run yeah, News Corp. the nuclear power program. News for Corp because you know the NRL is partly owned, isn't it? Still by News Corp. Um, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, Super League. Yeah. So News Corp can do this for Russell us. Russell Crowe could become the chairman of the National Nuclear Energy Authority. Yes. The NRL could be the nuclear rugby league. Yes, yes. That, that would be a very, very good idea. Now, Charles, and, for the, and for the southern states, maybe the AFL could also run half of, the, half of it. Yeah. Oh, no, they'd, then, that'd be part of it too. We're building everything we want, Charles. That's the whole, that's yeah. the whole approach we're doing. Yep. It's all happening. And then now, so instead of it being sort of private enterprise, it's sort of community enterprise. It's, it's sort of, you know, like it's, it's got a real... I mean, I know it's highly commercialised. Football is highly commercialised. But imagine going to, you know, like your kids wanting to go to the nuclear power yeah, station. It's literal grassroots. Footy. It's literal yeah, grassroots exactly. that you're playing footy on. I think I'm going to move to New Zealand. No, but it, actually I'm not going to move to New Zealand because it's opposites day. And if Peter Dutton thinks that this is going to get him elected, then... <laughs> It's never going to happen. This is never going to happen. And actually, isn't that the analysis that everyone knows it's never going to happen? But what it does is it just throws enough sawdust into the renewables industry, just the threat that it might happen, that it slows it down. And that's Peter Dutton's end game. All he wants is for, you know, the coal industry to, to thrive because that's you, where he gets his money from. You know what the real renewable thing is, the thing that, that seems as though it will never, it's the, it's the climate wars. They're endlessly renewable. Uh, we all thought we were past that and that we weren't going to have another climate election. This is all we're talking about between now and election day, Charles. Uh, fuck. 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 I just think I'm, I'm glad that at least on this point, Peter Dutton has learned that you don't always need details for a big policy plan. It's a bit sad for the people who wanted the voice, mm. but uh, you could argue that they won the argument in the end. I don't think they'll be cheered up much by that, but um, there you go. You, you don't always what? need detail. Uh, I just don't think I know enough about this nuclear policy. So as Peter Dutton says, if you don't know, I'm going to vote no on this. No, Charles, if you don't know, put all your oh. eggs in small modular nuclear reactors. <laughs> That's the lesson from this. Our gear is from Road. We're part of the Iconoclast Network. Okay, I, I, Dom, you've turned into a Queenslander. I, I don't think I'm liking this vibe, really. Well, I've got some phone books. I'm going to go out and meet some locals. <laughs>